This is how ancient debris generates in Minecraft. As you can see, it is the rarest ore to find in the game. It could take you ages to find enough to make a full netherite gear. And besides that, you will also need the smithing template, which is even more rare. But don't you worry, because I will show you four ways to find ancient debris for your netherite gear and how to find a smithing template as fast as possible. Are you ready? Let's break it down. There are four ways to find netherite. Using beds, by mining, using TNT, and by raiding bastions. Before we start with these four methods, let's look at this graph, where you can see where ancient debris spawns. Technically, it can spawn in every Y level of the nether, but the chance that you will find it above Y level 22 is so small that it's a complete waste of time to look for it there. The peak is at Y15, and it equally diminishes going more up and down. That's why Y15 is the best layer to look for ancient debris. Finding ancient debris can take time, but don't worry, because you actually don't need that much of it. You'll need to smelt 4 ancient debris for 1 netherite ignit to upgrade 1 item. So, for a full netherite armor, you just need to find 16 ancient debris. And for all your tools, including a hoe, you will need 20. So, to create full netherite gear, you will need to find 36 ancient debris ores. If that sounds like a lot to you, don't worry, because you will see how easy this can be. Number 1. Using beds. The first way to find ancient debris is to use beds. This is because you cannot sleep in the nether, and if you will try to do so, you will regret it soon after your bed exploded. But this is exactly where beds are the best and easiest way to look for ancient debris early game, if you take caution doing it. Just take a stack of wool and a stack of wood with you to craft yourself a lot of beds once you are down there. That's more efficient than coming to the nether with your inventory full of beds. You will also need some slabs, one diamond pickaxe and some food. Using this method could give you up to 30 ancient debris per hour. So, get yourself to Y15, but don't just start digging a tunnel yet. Be aware that you don't mine in the basalt delta biome, because basalt takes forever to mine and doesn't explode as easy as netherrack. Also make sure that you mine on the chunk border. A chunk is a 16 by 16 segment of a Minecraft world. The thing is, ancient debris ores tend to spawn close to chunk borders. So mining on a chunk border gives you a higher chance of finding ancient debris. To show chunk borders in Java edition, just press F3 and G. It's as easy as that. On Bedrock edition, chunk borders work the same. But the problem is that you cannot show them like in Java edition. To know if you're on a chunk border in Bedrock edition, go to the 0, 15, 0 coordinates in your world. Or just make sure that you can divide your X and Z axis by 16. If so, you are on a chunk border. Now dig a long tunnel on the chunk border. Then make branches on the sides of the tunnel, but only on the chunk borders. Now you could just randomly place and explode beds, but that could cost you a lot of health and is dangerous. But there is a safe way to use beds easily. First, mine all the blocks in front of you, without mining the ores in front of your feet. Then, place the bed as far as you can. There should now be a free block gap between you and the bed. Now place one more block to make that gap four blocks long and dig one block down. Lastly, place a slab underneath you, like this cobblestone slab. If you now stand on the slab and explode the bed, you will take just minimum damage. Even without armor, you just take one and a half hard damage. With iron armor, you take half a hard damage, and with diamond armor, you practically don't even take any damage. And besides that, you don't have to risk that it will get lava over you or catch fire. Now that the bed is exploded, look around for ancient debris blocks, as these blocks are fire and blast resistant and will stay exposed after the explosion. You can also quench some fires around you, because sometimes there is an ancient debris block hiding underneath a flame. But don't spend too much time doing this. When you are done, just continue your path straight. Dig some blocks into the next wall and repeat this process. Whenever you walk into too much lava, you can turn back to your main tunnel and try a different branch. Number 2. Mining. Maybe you think mining for ancient debris is a waste of time, but you would be wrong. It totally depends on the tools you have. You shouldn't use this method early game without any enchantments, because mining all the netherrack would take ages. But this is different if you have an enchanted pickaxe. Mining with the right enchantments could give you 40 ancient debris per hour. The three enchantments you should definitely want on your pickaxe are Unbreaking 3, Mending and Efficiency 2 or higher. The first two are just so that you will only need one pickaxe. The reason you will only need efficiency level 2 is because this will break netherrack instantly already, just like an efficiency 5 pickaxe. But still, the higher, the better, especially when you need to mine blackstone. Having this pickaxe will make it very easy for you to dig tunnels through the netherrack. You should mine like you are some kind of digging machine by mining in circles like this. So you are mining a 4x4 area. As you can see, this goes really fast and you will find ancient debris soon. 
When your pickaxe needs to be repaired, you can use all the ore blocks on your way, like quartz ores, to repair it. Just like with the bed method, make sure that you are mining on a chunk border to increase your chances to find ancient debris. You can't just mine in one straight line until you bump into lava. Then you can turn and go different directions on the chunk borders. When you bump into a lot of gravel, you can choose to just go around it or use a good efficiency shovel to go through it. Number 3. Using TNT. The third method is probably the most efficient method. You use TNT to blow up big areas on the ground. Similar as the bed method, but with TNT you can keep a safe distance and you can make a chain explosion of as many TNT as you like. Well, more like as many TNT as you can, because even though this is the most efficient method, it's by far also the most expensive one. So you won't be able to do this until you've made yourself a gunpowder farm. But if you have one, this is the best method to use, because it could give you up to 70 agent debris per hour. Using this method, it's better to dig a tunnel at Y13 or 14 to lower the chances to get these big lava falls over you. Just dig one long tunnel as long as you like. Make sure that you are mining on a chunk border to increase your chances to find ancient debris. Then place the TNT. You could place them all in one line, but it's more expensive and unnecessary. The best way to place them is this pattern of 1, skip, 2, skip, 1, skip, 2, skip. This way, you get a maximum explosion impact with less TNT. Light up the last TNT and get a safe distance. Once your TNT is exploding, follow the explosions and look for revealed ancient debris ores. But be careful for big lava falls. As you can see, you will find ancient debris spread around this new big tunnel that you made. Now you just have to mine it. But whether you like it or not, you will need to find at least one bastion and raid it if you want to have netherite gear. Because these are the only places where you can find a smithing template to upgrade your diamond gear into netherite gear. It might not be the most sustainable way to look for ancient debris, but while you are opening all these chests in these bastions, you have a chance to find ancient debris ores, netherite scraps or even netherite ignits in these chests. Sometimes even multiple netherite ignits in one chest. The chance that you find these varies per type of bastion, but I will cover all of that in another video. For now, it's most important to know how to find the smithing template. Bastions are found all over the nether, except in the basalt delta biome. To find one, you just need to explore the nether. However, if you find a nether fortress, there will be no bastion close by. An easy way to explore the nether is by riding a strider on the lava. Place a saddle on the strider and use a fungi on a stick to ride it. When you found the bastion, you need to know that there are four types of bastions. Bridges, Hoglin stables, housing units and the treasure room. You have a 10% chance to find a smithing template when you open any chest. However, there is one chest in a treasure room that has a 100% chance to contain this smithing template. So ideally you want to find a treasure room bastion. You can easily recognize them by their shape. Two big colossal black boxes and a bridge that connect them with these lava pools underneath it. When you enter the lower box of these two, you can look down and see a lot of gold blocks in one place. In one of these chests there, you will have a guaranteed smithing template. If you didn't find a treasure room bastion, just explore the one you have found and open the chest there, because you still have a 10% chance per chest to find one. But if you are a bit lazy, you can use this website called chunkbase.com. You can copy your seed in here, select the version you have and click on the nether dimension. Here you can see the pickling icons with the chest on it, which are the treasure room bastions close to you. Just check the coordinates and copy it or write it down. For more help with finding which seed you have, check out the description. Bastions are dangerous places, mostly because of the pickling brutes. They will always attack you, no matter what kind of armor you are wearing. They are very strong and can kill you in a few hits. And to make it worse, they will disable your shield for 5 seconds if you try to block their attack. And if you hit them, you will also anger the normal piglins around you, and that can make things even more complicated. So getting to the smithing template could be very challenging, but you can make it a lot easier for yourself however by bringing a bucket of lava with you and one or two stacks of building blocks like netherrack. Be aware of your surroundings and make sure you have space to pile up. When you see or hear a pigmin brute, pile up at least two blocks, but more is safer of course. Make sure it cannot reach you from the side or something. Then just throw your lava bucket on the piglin brute where it's standing. He will slowly die in the lava, but you don't anger the other piglins around you. Just continue doing this and make your way to the chest. You can do all of this easier and safer when you enter from the roof. You make your way down slowly and you will have enough space to pile up if necessary. When you are down there and open the chest, you will anger all the piglins around you. But you can avoid it by placing blocks around you and the chest so the piglins won't see you opening it. In another video I will show you how to completely raid the bastion. But for now, just take the template and leave carefully. Now you have all your ancient debris and your smithing template. 
Now you can smelt your ancient debris and use the netherite scraps that come out together with gold to create a netherite ignit. Use a smithing template to upgrade your diamond gear into netherite gear using a netherite ignit and a smithing template. But remember that you only have one template now and you will need to duplicate it for every armor or tool you want to upgrade. To do that, you will need 7 diamonds and a netherite block. If you need more diamonds, make sure to watch my next video where I show you the fastest ways to find diamonds. Or watch my other videos about finding iron or gold. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.